My name is Cade Russell, and I'm here today with Miss Emily Atef, and she is a celebrated German filmmaker. And I can say it's a very honor for you to, um, to come here and present to us. We thought it was very wonderful. Um, so I'll start off with the first question. Um, since in your childhood, you traveled around a lot um, from the U.S. to France to Germany, um, in what ways did that have an effect on the way your films are made? Um, it, it did have an effect in the fact that I... I learned to. Um, I had to learn to adapt very quickly to be to, to be accepted every time we move. We moved every seven years about, and uh, and after that, I I took that as um, I took that as something positive and not negative. As a child, it was something that was quite difficult. But as an adult, I realized that I could actually um, adapt anywhere. And I could also, and I have this, uh, and I have this need, basically, to um, uh, to meet other cultures. Through this much traveling, uh, it made me want to um, to always travel more. And basically, my films as well. Um, most of them are made in. I, I can I can never imagine. I live now in Berlin, but I can never imagine only making German films. My first film was made in Poland. My second one in Germany. My my third one in Germany and France. And now I'm working on a film that I might shoot in Lebanon and one that I want to shoot in France and Norway. So I, it's always the the search to the other, basically. All right. Thank you. Um, so next question. Um, where do you see the role in film in I guess cultural diplomacy and kind of um, bridging two people together from different parts of the world. Well, I think film film making. I mean, films are extremely uh, powerful. I mean, some people use it as propaganda, yeah? but it's uh, um, and I. I mean, that's why I want to make films. Is I want to touch not only the people I live with, but I want to touch uh, people in other. Uh, parts of the world who I don't understand if I meet them like this, who I don't even know, who I don't, uh, whose cultures and traditions and religion even are so different to me and film through, okay, through subtitles, but through the image, through music, through acting, if the stories are universal, mm -hmm. uh, not like a specific story, but if they're universal, they, they, they touch, they just touch, mm -hmm. so it's extremely powerful because uh, you could give messages, you know, if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, even the, the most simple ones of, of, uh, of people living together or even a love story. Or and you said um, something about subtitles. Um, in your opinion, do you think, since in Germany they have a dubbing industry to dub the German language over foreign films, do you think that has a negative impact on the actual cultural exchange? Yeah, definitely. I find that atrocious. I can't stand this dubbing culture. Um, it's and in France they do it as well, except in not as much in the cinema. But uh, but I was so surprised when I went to Portugal, because in Portugal in everything, even on TV, is subtitled. So the kids speak English or German very quickly or French because they look at all these German detective stories, uh, uh, thrillers. They look at all these American films and they're right into the language and into the culture. I find, I just can't, I can't I'm allergic against it. I can never go see a film that's dubbed. I can't stand to see a, an African film with German voices. It's just fake. I totally agree with you. <laughs> um, so kind of my next question, um, I'm asking, since like the Hollywood film industry seems to really have the large grasp over the entire world when it comes to films, and I think um, it's very difficult for certain films from you know Germany, France, Spain, China, North South Korea, um, just all, all around the world. It's really difficult for these films to get around more and become more, I guess, um, especially in the United States. You, you don't you know you don't get very many foreign films um, in the theaters, or even you can't buy it on DVD. It's very difficult to find it. Um, in your opinion, what can be done to pretty much break this Hollywood barrier and get these foreign films to people that don't usually have foreign films? I mean, to break Hollywood, it's just not, I don't think it's, I don't think it's possible. The thing is that nowadays with, with, uh, with DVDs, things become more accessible, thank God. People see, you know, could see my films if they really want to. They could just Amazon it. Thank God that could happen. Fifteen years back, it was very difficult that, and um, it's. 
I mean, it, it's hard. It's not even that, just the American and, and, and the European, but it's also in the European. I mean, my films are art house films. They're film d'auteur. And even those films in Germany or in France are very difficult to see because everybody wants to see the big commercial films. So that's even. I'm not even trying to compete against Americans. I'm trying to go. I, I want even just like Germans to come see my films or, or, for, or Europeans to see it. It's, it's difficult. It's harder and harder for art house filmmakers to to have an audience because um, kids just want to see what they're fed. There's no more educate. There should be cinema education in school. In France, there is. That's why the French um, cinema is the is the strongest after after the American. And it's a small country, but people go see their film, French films. They love their stars, and this is not happening here. They prefer to go see an, an American film than a German film, basically. So I think it starts with education. If you teach kids to, okay, watch Batman, yeah, but also watch a Godard and also watch what happened in the 20s and what uh, uh, Cassavetes, um, an old Mar Martin Scorsese, then they're starting to say, whoa, this is, this is fantastic. If you'd only show them Toy Story or, I don't know, uh, you know, The Hobbit, you know, how are they, why would they want to go see uh, Kill Me, my film, you know, mm -hmm. without big music, without big guns.